Hi, good evening. Welcome to TEDx. Yes, this is incredibly exciting, and I am very excited to be here with you. But tonight, I'd like to take you on a journey, one down to my neighborhood of Astoria, Queens. It's a place in New York City that's really a neighborhood in the old-fashioned sense, where you run into friends on the street, people look out for one another, and it's the place I call home. But before we do that, I'd ask for you to close your eyes, okay? I want you to imagine a freshly baked, right out of the oven, chocolate chip cookie. The chocolate is all melty, the dough is gooey and warm in the middle, but crispy and caramelized around the edges. You can almost taste how good it is. Okay, now open your eyes. That cookie is gonna take us there. About a year ago, I found myself baking a lot. Now, I've always been someone that bakes. I grew up in a small town where we're known for making and sharing our Heitman cookies, which is a secret family chocolate chip recipe. So it seemed natural to me that I would want to share my baked goods whenever I was whipping something up. Now, I don't have any family close by, and all my friends have a very different work schedule than I do, so I thought I would take it to um, Cerisos, which is my local Italian deli, where I am a frequent customer. I had no idea what I was in for. Whenever I would go back to pick up the plate or the containers that I had originally brought the baked goods on, I was met with a rave review and a sincere appreciation for having been thought of. And that's really what stuck with me. You see, every business is there to provide a service. And a lot of us feel that the money we pay for that service acts as the thank you. I give you money, you give me coffee. Transaction complete. But when I saw how happy a simple cookie made Chrissy or Sal or Frank, it made me think, what if I could do that for everyone? The act of sharing these baked goods and cookies, something specifically intended for that person, also prompted the desire to dig deeper, taking us further away from the realm of business and deeper into that of human connection. When I would walk home from these plate pickups, I felt so good like I had just done something kind and selfless for someone else, but feeling like there was more I could do. This idea had the potential to be bigger than one place or one person. As I thought about how I could grow this into what I envisioned, I knew that I had to have parameters and set up some rules if people in New York City would take me seriously and not be completely skeptical, even if I was the only one that knew about them. So I went home, called my mother, we brainstormed, and this is what I came up with. One, this would be something that I would do weekly. I knew this project had to have consistency for me to follow through and for the recipients of my cookies to be believers in this project. Two, nothing gets delivered on paper or plastic. It was and still is very important to me that things get delivered on a real plate. It says, you are not disposable. I'm not only investing in the businesses by being a patron on these drops, but also investing in the people. It's a great way to follow up with the business when I go back to pick up the plate and build trust by saying that the cookies I'm leaving with you are not harmful in any way. <laughs> you would not believe how many people have asked me if they're poisonous. I assure you they're not. And three, the business that I'm currently at, nope, the business that I'm currently at gets to recommend where I go the next week. So they tell me who they think deserves an act of kindness like this. I call it Bake It Forward. I feel that that's the step that really elevates this project from just being a string of places I like to go. It's a real community effort. And I'm just as much a follower of the trail of kindness as anyone else. <clears throat> Excuse me one second. Okay, sorry. Having made these many batches of chocolate chip cookies with my mother growing up, I thought that they were the perfect centerpiece for this project. It was the easiest and the most logical for me to make on a large and a long-term scale. It was also the most financially feasible. I decided I would call it Single Girl Cookies, not only for the fact that I was single and consequently had a lot of free time on my hands to bake, but that I believe it takes one single person to make a difference. 
almost like I wanted to prove it to myself. I added the slogan, one girl, one mission, to spread kindness and smiles one cookie at a time. I started a Twitter account under the name Astoria Baker. I ordered business cards to add legitimacy, and I made my first delivery. And so, my journey began. And here I am 10 months later, and I have learned a lot. A lot about myself and a lot about others, individually and as a collective community. I've come to believe that people are inherently good. You just have to give them a chance. I've been the recipient of others' generosity as they've responded with their gifts of food, beer, offers of services, and connections of friendship. But I think many of us in our daily passing don't have time to make that connection, or even think to make that connection. In this uh, world of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and a thousand other social networking sites, many of us lead fairly self-centered lives. And when we do take a moment to come up for air and look up from our cell phones, we tend to regard others around us with suspicion. I'd love to see us, as a human population, view others with a lens of positivity rather than that of negativity. I think many that I encounter in New York City tend to view others as guilty until proven innocent, and I've done the very same thing. For example, take my drops at the firehouses of Astoria. I had previously been to the local police precinct where my project was met with indifference and ambivalence to what I was doing. And if I'm being honest, some of the officers were a tad chauvinistic too. So when they told me that my next drop was going to be at engine 312, I thought, that's just great. Another boys club that I have to contend with. In my mind, I had already made up personalities for these guys and had convinced myself that I knew what they were about and that I didn't like it. I have never been more wrong. The next three weeks as I visited all of the firehouses in Astoria have been by far the most positive and reaffirming experiences of single girl cookies. At that first firehouse, Engine 312, I learned the story of Joey and how he became a fireman. He was scheduled to take the fireman's exam but was in a terrible accident a few days beforehand, rendering him unable to do so. Now, this exam only comes around once every seven years. So in the meantime, he had to figure out what to do with his life. He went back to grad school. Nope. I swear I did not touch that that time. <laughs> he went back to grad school. He got his master's in special education and taught low-functioning middle school students for the next five years. Uh, I had remarked on how different these two professions were, fireman and special ed teacher. Um, Oh, I missed a part of the story, sorry. He did take the test, passed with flying colors. He's a great fireman now. But when I told him, you know, I said, gee, that's, that's pretty different. He goes, you know, not really. Both are helping people, you know? The uh, second house that I went to, Engine 263, I was met with open arms from welcoming guys that have never let me leave there hungry. Every time I visit, and I do make return visits, they uh, greet me with a, hey, do you want any coffee? We just had dinner. Come on back to the kitchen. We got something for you to eat. And I take them up on it every time. We go back in the kitchen. I have some food or a cup of coffee, whatever they've got on hand. We talk about their families. I hear about how their summers are. And we make another firehouse hang date. I even learned that the third floor of that firehouse used to have a grand piano where Anthony Benedetto, Mr. Tony Bennett himself, used to come and rehearse as a young man. And at the third house, I rounded out my collection of photos that I call single girl cookies with firemen. <laughs> Very early on, when I knew I was going to go to all the firehouses, I thought, you know, it would be pretty neat if I got a photo with some or all of the men at each of these houses as a unique representation of my time spent there. And so, this is the result. This is uh, at 312. That is at 263. That's at 262. And this morning I went to the Utica Fire Department as well. These are not at all the men that I thought I was going to encounter when I went to that first firehouse. It's a huge lesson for me to remain open to new experiences and when meeting new people, and also to allow for my perception to be shifted. 
If we shift our perception and change our perspective, we can change the world. But as you know, real growth, connection, and change start small and grow slowly. I'm starting with my neighborhood of Astoria and the places I visit. And I'm doing it with a cookie. How simple is that? Over the last 10 months, I've been to about 45 places with the nature of businesses ranging from a restaurant to a laundromat, um, deli, of course, a salon. I went to the New York Center for Rehabilitation and Nursing. And yes, of course, those wonderful firehouses. I. <laughs> Yes, these are cookies. Please take one and pass it down. You're not, you don't think I'm going to talk for this about 12 minutes and then not let you have one, right? In May, I conducted a fundraiser to raise money for the victims of the Oklahoma City tornadoes. And by asking a $5 donation per cookie, I was able to raise $475 that I sent to the Red Cross. I've been written about in DNA Info, Huffington Post, uh, various blogs, and was even on the ABC News. And these slides that you see are the faces of all the people at all the places that I've been to. Think of how many more people could be impacted if tomorrow you all went out and did one kind thing for someone. Think of it like stones in a pond. One stone creates many ripples, but it's still one stone. Imagine the ripples we could create if we all threw one stone. My hope for you is that you leave here today asking yourself, what can I do for my neighbor, and how can I give back to my community? What are the unique talents that you possess that can be used to create good for others? Gandhi says to be the change you wish to see in the world. Let's be that change we wish to see in our worlds.